Hi guys, Rishi this side. So today we'll be learning how to create fancy responsive buttons in Figma. The buttons that you see on the screen, they are all responsive in nature. Isn't it cool? So we will be using auto layout and some basic techniques to build these buttons. And you might be like, there are like too many auto layouts. But don't worry, we'll go step by step so that you can easily follow along. Let us first understand the anatomy or the structure for creating such buttons. I'm going to select the frame tool and let's draw three frames. Keep the width 12 pixel and height 32 pixel. Give it a fill for the time being. Make a copy out of this by pressing command D or control D or simply holding alt and dragging a copy out of this. Let's change the fill just for the differentiation and make another copy of the same frame. Let's just reorder them and let's just rename all the frames starting from the left. Let's name it left, middle and right. Now select the middle frame. Take the text tool and add a label. Let's center it out. Now select all the frames and add an auto layout. Let's rename this to button. Now the idea here is keeping the middle frame fluid according to its content and keeping the left and the right frames with a fixed width. So left and the right frame will contain the side shapes of your button. Let's select the middle frame and add an auto layout. Now if we see we have our responsive button ready. So this will be the underlying skeleton we'll be using for our button. Let's select the right frame and take the rectangle tool, draw a shape similar to the width and height of its parent. Let's add a fill to this. If you select this option, you can individually give rounded radius to the individual corners of the shape. Let's say 8 and 8 pixel for the top right and bottom right corner. Let's rename this layer to border. Duplicate this same layer by pressing command or control D. Let's change the fill. Let's call it base. And let's reduce the width and height by 2 pixel. sorry height by 4 pixel so that we have a 2 pixel border around it and let's just reduce the corner radius as well by 2 pixel now that we have our side shapes ready let's copy these shapes select the left frame and paste it you can just right click and choose flip horizontal now that we have our shapes ready for the left and the right part of the button, let's just select both the frames and remove the fill. Cool. Now let's start building the structure for the middle one. Let's select the label layer, rename it to label. Let's put this layer inside another frame by right clicking frame selection or just choose a shortcut and let's call this container and again select the label layer add one more frame and let's call it main button cool 
let's just add an auto load on the container and on the main button now for the middle frame let's select it and change the fill to the same base fill which we are using for the side shapes now you can see our button is having a one pixel gap on the bottom and if we just add padding let's say 12 pixel our shapes are not aligning to the bottom of the button so to do that what we need to do is select the main button layer the topmost one go to auto layer option and let's make it bottom center cool now select the middle layer and add only bottom padding let's say 16 pixel now select the main container and add a fill similar to this one and let's add a bottom padding of 4 pixel don't forget to turn on the fill now select the main button and add a lighter blue fill from our color palette and let's change the label to white cool now let's select the container layer and add a border radius of 8 pixel and let's say clip content select the main button layer and add 4 pixel of padding now you can see an overflowing background color of the middle section underneath this button so we'll be fixing this there is a pretty easy fix for this one let's just add a couple of more styles to our button now go to the container layer add a stroke make it a darker blue and let's make it 2 pixel let's just add a little bit more padding to give it more height for the bevel and let's do the same thing for the main button let's add a 4 pixel radius I think we used 8 and add a stroke similar to the dark blue and let's keep it one pixel only we can add a little bit more padding on the left and the right side of the main button now as you can see our corner radius are not properly blending with the container to do that let's add one pixel padding on the container layer for the top right and the left one now we have a proper curving of the radius since we were using a stroke in the inside of the container so it was covering the stroke of the main button let's just make a gloss make it pixel radius let's change the fill to white rename it to gloss and let's bring it all the way inside the main button now you can see the behavior has changed so what we need to do is select the main button and change the direction from horizontal to the vertical direction let's move the clause underneath the label layer and let's fix some parameters here let's move it four let's duplicate the clause one more copy and let's just 
reduce the opacity to zero so that we can have an equal spacing on the top and bottom of the label what we can do is to move this gloss on the right side what we can do is select the main button layer go to the auto layer option and use this alignment top right cool now let's get back to our middle section now to make a border like this we can achieve the same effect using the inner shadow let's add effect here change it to inner shadow let's reduce the blur to zero y let's move it to minus two pixel and let's pick the color same as that of our border color see now it's matching now let's fix this overflowing background color select the middle layer select the fill and let's change it to linear let's just flip the palette let's move the solid one really close to the transparent and then let's just move the gradient to the middle like this now that we have fixed the overflowing background color for the middle section i think let's reduce the spacing between the elements it's looking a little more on the higher side now let's just select the main button layer add a drop shadow go to settings just turn on this one show behind transparent areas let's pick the border color let's remove the blur and here we have the button ready now if i change the label let's say click me just adjust the glow if you think it's little wider let's just reduce the width as you can see a label is not perfectly centered in the main button that's because we have changed the layout from top center to right center now what if we want to keep our gloss on the right side but rest of the alignment in the center so let's just first change the main button alignment to top center or let's say center center click the gloss layer the visible one put it inside the frame and let's call it gloss and then let's change the parameter from fixed width to fill container go inside the gloss container and move the gloss on the right side and make it constrained to top and the right now if we change the label our gloss will always be on the right and our label will always be in the center so let's just see the examples which i showed in the beginning of the tutorial and let's just see the structure of those buttons as i mentioned earlier there is an underlying structure to these buttons so let's just see this game button and let's trim down to its layers we have a right middle and the left frame and if we further go down in those frames you can see i have just used simple shapes to create this style in the middle we have different shapes and label and couple of more shapes and if you see the futuristic button the same is happening in terms of the structure and there are so many things that you can achieve just with the effects itself for example if you see this biscuit button i guess if we see the structure we just have the basic button and we have the label so what exactly we have done here is we have played with the effects 
I have a base fill and on top of that I have one dark pattern and one light pattern to create this kind of bevel effect let me just zoom in and to make this kind of a layering effect I have just used multiple drop shadows keeping the biggest one in the bottom white one in the center and another one to make the top of the biscuit and let's just try one more thing select the main button add a fill and let's add a linear fill change it to white and let's just move the solid one really close to the transparent let's just increase the opacity of the linear fill itself to 50 percent now if you move this linear fill something like this so let's say it's it has a diagonal sort of gloss on it let's just reduce it so anytime you make changes in the label this gloss will adjust automatically i hope you might have learned few cool tricks through this tutorial if you like this please share it with your fellow friends and stay tuned for more tutorials like this thanks for watching